Another new addition this year, wedges. So let's talk about new wedge additions. We're looking at a couple of new finish options, a couple of new grinds and bounces. So why don't you walk us through kind of what we can expect for 2024. Yeah, we have the S159 line. Uh, we're very excited about it. Like you said, lots of new additions. Um, in this line, we have six different grinds. Um, in, in our previous line, we had four. So we stuck with the same four grinds we've had for a few years and added two. So the two new ones being an H grind and a B grind. And then, as you mentioned, we have an extra finish, our Midnight, which is a, a black option. Um, so we're really excited about that. Lots of opportunities for players to find exactly what works for them. And then just great technology in the whole line. We've worked super hard on our understanding of friction, which is a weird and wonderful science. And so we spent years researching that. And it still has uh, mysteries that we're uncovering every time. But um, we feel like we understand as much about friction as anyone else in the world and can harness that to help deliver maximum spin in our wedge line. So hydropearl being... Uh, basically like benchmark technology for the wedges. Yeah, Hydropearl is one of those, one of those friction enhancing technologies and, and we call it Hydrophobisti. So the Hydropearl is our chrome finish. Hydrophobisti would mean like repelling water. And that is a good thing. Uh, you know, I think anyone who's watched motor racing would know that you, know, you get plenty of grip in the dry and then as soon as it's raining, those cars are slipping around everywhere. Yep. Well, that's a great analogy to your golf ball and your wedge. That when, if you're indoors, if you're hitting off a mat like we're, like we're here, then really you don't need the finish. You don't even need grooves. You can hit a grooveless wedge and get plenty of spin. But as soon as you put the real world in there, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of grass, then all bets are off. And that's when the technology we put in really comes into effect. So the hydropole gives us that hydrophobic coating that helps repel the water, get it out of there. The grooves are right up to the USGA limit as, as uh, effective as we can possibly make them. And then actually something people don't tend to notice, the milling marks and the blasting, all those different pieces on the wedge contribute to adding friction when you most need it. And, and each piece by itself adds some spin, some more marginal gains. When you add them all up together, what you get is fantastic spin, even when there's a bit of grass between club and ball. So something that we're very interested in, um, especially at TrueSpec, uh, we do a lot of indoor wedge fittings, and we get asked a lot um, about that. Uh, what are you guys going to do? How are you going to do that? You guys have come up with, with an app with some AI to tell the consumer what they're going to need. Um, it'll also help the fitter um, kind of guide us through, you know, the birth of that, what the idea was on that, what just the nuts and bolts of, of the, new, the new application. Yeah, so having, having two more grinds, having six different grinds is, is great, but it now gives us more of a challenge of really helping guide people into which of those six are the one for me. It's, it's unrealistic that you're going to thoroughly test out all six unless you're really spending a long time on wedges. Right. So the idea of the app was to kind of capture what is the minimum number of questions, the most simple way we can get to the heart of knowing enough about your game and what you're trying to do with your wedges which is the wedge for you. So we've really kind of used, you know, what our, our fitting knowledge from over the years, uh, particularly our, our senior wedge designer, Jacob Clark, and his work with tour players. What's he doing? What's he looking for when he's working with tour players? And then an awful lot of testing. You know, we've, we've come up with some questions that we thought would work. We test them with 100 players, see what we get, make some changes, do it again. You know, there's no substitute for the, the hard work there. And what we've come up with is it's about a six to eight questions that we think almost everyone can answer pretty well. Just a little bit about your game. Do you tend to take huge divots or smaller divots? Do you tend to play on softer ground or, or firmer ground? Um, what are you, what are you, what's most important to you? Are you looking for maximum help in a bunker? Or are you looking for maximum help on getting the club on the ball on very tight lines? Or something like that. So trying to keep it as simple as we can, but then use those questions to guide okay, for you, you'd be a great candidate for that new H grind. And maybe as a second choice, the S grind. So, so maybe that's two grinds that you can go test. Yeah. And, and you can get a pretty good idea indoors on a mat, particularly if, you, if you're looking at kind of short around the green shots rather than a lot of players tend to focus on full swing with their wedges, but you hit so many more shots around the green than you do full swing that we really try to guide people to you know, practice those shots. And, and when you're doing a fitting, look at those shots, look at the 20 yard, don't necessarily just take full swings. Yeah, and with your app, so 
what I've what I've noticed about that, I mean, obviously you've you've gotten you got the three big things. So you've got you've got gapping down, mm -hmm. so you can you can help guide through gapping, um, and then you've got bounce and you've got grind. So those are three really big aspects of that. So so based on all the data and everything that you guys have you guys have seen. Um, most people are going to probably land. Why don't you kind of tell us where most people kind of kind of land? I've got a kind of an idea, but I kind of want to know what you what you say. Yeah, I think gapping wise is a, is a relatively easy one. That that most people have a good idea of what they want their highest loft wedge to be, and so if we have a reasonable idea how you're hitting your pitching wedge, and we know what you want your highest loft wedge to be, we run that through our algorithms to say, well, maybe a 50 degree and a 54 would help give you that gap, or if you want to play three wedges, maybe you just play a 52. So yeah. that one's relatively, I say relatively simple math. I am a mathematician, <laughs> but relatively <laughs> simple mathematics to, to come to that. With the, the grinds and the bounce, and I kind of lump them together a little bit, a lot of players are in this sort of medium bounce because they're looking for versatility across different conditions. There's different parts of the country and different parts of the world where it really guides people into hey, lower bounce wedges are going to work great. You know, I lived in St. Andrews for seven years. I don't think we're going to do too many high bounce wedges in St. Andrews where it's really tight and hard. Yeah, sure. So the, the places you play will dictate that a bit. But if you're a golfer who likes to travel and play in a range of conditions, then you'd see more people gravitating to the mid bounce for that reason, that they want the versatility. And then a big one is how much do you like to open up the face? And, and that's we see a pretty even split of golfers who like to play most of their wedge shots with a pretty square face. And then we can have a slightly wider sole, give you more forgiveness on those. The trade-off is a little harder to open up and be versatile, but it's more forgiving when you're hitting with the square face technique. And then you get golfers who really love to open it up, hit a lot of flop shots, get very handsy. Those players, we, we would kind of guide into the more versatile options, which would be the T and the H grind. Yeah, and those those would probably be your better players, right? So the lower bounce is going to be in that category. But um, I like to tell people that bounce is your friend. So most of the time, you're probably going to want to go with more bounce, unless you're going to play a St. Andrews, unless you're going to play a, like Band and Dunes or something like that. But I'll I'll kind of steer them into the direction of that. I I have that tendency to do that. But um, like, what are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I think there's a big misconception that. Good players don't play with, don't play with much bounce, and so people kind of want to play a low bounce because it's what the good it's players cool. do. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, that, that's really not true. If you look at our, our tour staff, it's a real mixed bag, and and they'll change them around depending on the conditions. But it's by no means the case that all of our tour players play low bounce wedges. It's a, it's a mixed bag depending on technique, and that same thing would apply to you know the mass market that. There are people out there who are higher handicappers who will do well with a lower bounce wedge. There are people out there who are really low handicappers who will do well with a high bounce wedge. It's not a, it's not a measure of how good a golfer you are. Yeah. It's a measure of your technique. Yeah, and it comes down to attack angle, right, at the end of the day. Attack angle and, and how much do you lean the shaft? How much bounce are you exposing? Um, so th those two things really make a big difference. I think that's where the app comes into play and application for the player. So I think that's great addition to a player's arsenal and also great addition for fitting opportunities with us to really dial in what it is that could work for that player and help them in the long run. <laughs>